And we're back with our beautiful little baby bass here, chugging along nicely. We're uh, we're almost done with all that polluted water up there. Our sour gas boiler is going along just fine. Industrial sauna, uh, I might need to put in another steam turbine, but if I do, I'm going to have to move this liquid lock around. I'd rather not, but we're going to worry about all of that later. For now, we are getting as much ice resin as we can because we need to run insulated pipes all the way from over here to over, over there to over here. But first, uh, maybe let's get rid of some of this gunk that's lying around. We weren't using that uh, Draco farm anyway. It, it needed to go. Uh, next up, we need to do some modifications in here. You always gotta love breaking into this place. It's it's interesting every single time. So, this is how we get in here safely. We use one of these. Uh, oh, so we'll stop that now. We only need a little bit of a blob. We're going to be very careful about this. And hopefully we didn't drop any of this stuff. You know what? Let's just make sure we didn't. Okay, then we scoop up all the remainder and now we break our way in here. Now, if we've done this right, we should just be able to step down a little bit and get right into the place. There we go. Now you see we've got that liquid blob stopping all the steam rushing in, though it's probably not helping the temperature in there too much. Not going to be too worried. Now there's two things we want to do. One, we want to get the automation here cleaned up. We want it all uh, compactified. We need to double layer this because we eventually just want to wall this whole side off and not have to worry about any meteors getting in. Meteors can pass through one layer of tile, so if a meteor was to come in at an angle here and hit there, Regolith might spawn on the other side and mess that up, but that's not a big concern right now. That is no longer 100% necessary. But we don't want any getting in here, and I want to seal this sucker up nice and tight. Also, I need to replace that tile with igneous rock. Not igneous, uh, not igneous rock, obsidian, because it's tougher. This seems to get pressure damage. Occasionally the liquid in here flashes and then flashes back. I don't know, it's causing problems. So hopefully if we release, replace it with something tougher, it will cause us less problems. Since the only two tiles that appear to be getting damaged are this one and this one, we're going to replace this one first and hopefully nothing horrific escapes. Uh, come on. This is, could be a huge mess. Okay, it's probably going to be a huge mess, but... Oh, okay. That... Wasn't great. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> oh, I forgot to turn this off, didn't I? Uh, let's turn those off. Yep. Yeah. Everyone, stop doing what you're doing. We okay. We got some. Oh, okay. Bit of a mess. Bit of a mess. But nothing exploded too badly. We're going to lose more hydrogen now in a second, anyway. Especially when someone comes around and fixes that. Come on, hurry up. We got to get that tile in there. Okay. Okay. Not not the worst. All right. Uh, this. Oh, I turned this off, I bypassed it. So we're just pumping out 10 kilos per second, and all I've done is limited it over here to 5. It just uh, trying to limit this to 5 kilos per second was pointless. It was too close to the, the limiter, and uh, you know what? We can survive the way we're going. I really should have finished this before the rocket came home. Oops. <laughs> uh, so I think I killed a bunch of visco gel. What a day. Uh, well, oh, no, we don't need any more. That, that's enough of that. You know what, we'll let that one finish. I don't care, we've got to clean out this whole mess in here. <laughs> Not my brightest moment. All right, we've got our automation sorted for now. That's just tight and out of the way. We can double layer this, but first things first, we want to start putting in our insulated piping. I think we'll fill up the rocket one more time, launch it, and then we can redo the piping while it's gone. Yeah, at super speeds, this thing fills up pretty quick. Also, we're accessing a different planet now to the first one we were going to on the grounds that we didn't need it. And oh, wait, no, I can't launch the rocket now, can I? I can't because it'll rip out that tile. Okay, we'll we'll launch the rocket in a moment once we've uh, yeah once we've replaced all these pipes. Yeah, that, 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 it'll be no time at all. First things first, you rip out all the old pipes and then you start putting in bridges. I was reminded in the comments I don't have to use insulated pipes the whole way along. All I have to do is use bridges, and that will reduce our costs by about a third, which means we can get this whole thing up and running sooner. Now, there, there there and ooh, wait we'll wait till the rest of that is de deconstructed we'll pop this over here come on game don't freeze on me now we go in there and done that way when we turn that on we can just fill this up constantly as much as we like also we still have the option to turn off the pumps if needs be but it should mean we have a constant flow of liquid if we need it perfect now if we just turn that on actually you know what let's have a quick look and make sure everything's working the way it's intended yep we're good and over here uh, I can't actually tell if that went on or not. <laughs> Did it? You know what? We're going to assume that's working. <laughs> anyway, that's the full tank filled up. We're using instead of pipes now. We don't have to worry about rotations, which means we can keep launching this as much as we like. 
which reminds me we should now seal this up. We don't need to get in here ever again. All sealed up nice and tight. No worries about meters ever getting in there and clogging up our water source. That should be right. I'm not going to worry about here at all just yet, but that is a solid side. Now we can get rid of all of the scaffolding. A nice clean silo, but not quite finished yet. We still have some more work to do in that. Over here, this, uh, there was a few mentions that this was going to overpressurize. We're dumping a whole bunch of water in here. These natural gas generators, when they're active, which they are 24-7 now, uh, produce 67.5 grams of water. And eventually, what would happen is this liquid vent would overpressurize. Once it hits 200 kilos of pressure in here, it will no longer be able to vent. Now, sticking with the theme of, let's make it simple, all we did was stuck in an overflow vent. If the pressure in here goes above 1,000 kilos of water pressure, the water won't be able to vent in here, so instead it will just get dumped over here and dropped on the floor. Uh, the great thing about this, though, is as we take water out of here, we'll, we'll be taking 4 kilos out per second, so we will have to dump some back in. So there will be cooling still provided, it's just all the excess will be siphoned out and dumped into the, uh, the rocket silo. It seems like a, a good compromise. Now we have to figure out a route we're going to send all of this Mm, all of the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen we're, we're producing. It's going to be awkward, we don't really have a lot of space. Using just a whole bunch of pipe bridges and some insulation, this is about as far as we got with the oxygen. We're almost, almost under, uh, in, in range of silo. This is the hydrogen line, it's, it's yeah, that we haven't even started on that one, but that one's where it's going to go. So with all of that taken care of, it's time to start stripping out this whole area. We need to turn this whole whole chunk into a rocket silo, and we need to decide how we're going to plan it and lay it out. Uh, all the stuff down here has got to go. It's kind of nice to think that this entire area down here used to be in just magma. There was nothing down there but magma, and now we've gotten rid of all of it, and we've got an actual reasonable place. Well, as reasonable as this little bit of insanity can be. Eh, let's get it all stripped out. Once it's all done, we can start planning our rocket silo. That is everything straight down the middle, all stripped out, though we do have a bit of a sweeping job, and by a bit I mean a lot. There's about, what, 15, well, 1,513 tons of regolith, and all of it's in here somewhere. That's going to take a while to strip out of there. Also, it's very hot. We'll be dumping it all down here, and our cooling loop is going to get an extra, extra solid workout. <laughs> that should hopefully keep the place from overheating too much, but... Mm, making no promises. On the bright side, the living area is lovely and balmy. Now, I'm going to skip fo time forward quite a bit because that is an awful lot of manual labour. We could try some fancy tricks, but you know what, I still have to wait for the installation, so there's no rush. Oh, some fun things happen while you're not looking. I'm pretty sure what happened there was a, a meter hit at an angle and it knocked all the food out of there. Our entire storage area has been compromised. Um, yeah, you know what, I'm just going to let that food rot. I don't even care anymore. We've got everything we need. So, yeah, let's just leave it there. I'm getting a little bit blasé about it, but I might as well. Uh, ooh, what have we got in here? Uh, more isoresin. Perfect. Slowly but surely, we'll grind up our empire of insulation. And we're just about getting there. This is the, the pipe that goes all the way across, so we can provide oxygen to this side. We can't get the hydrogen yet. That's going to be a while longer, but we might as well diversify a bit. So what I was thinking was we could do a liquid petroleum rocket. Reason being, we've got the oxygen over here, or we can get liquid oxygen over here, so we've already got a liquid uh, is there in place, a liquid oxygen tank in place. Let's just throw in some petroleum. I've got five tons of this stuff lying around the place, and we might as well burn it off. We can use that to go to the closer planet to get ice resin, and we can use this rocket to go to the further away one. Which reminds me, how is the further away one looking? Ooh, no, wait, not that one. This one. 6,000 kilos of on there available. Excellent, we'll go launch a rocket at that, and that will get us, well, that means we'll be harvesting two planets regularly for ice resin from here on in. Well, once we get the petroleum up and running. One thing I feel like I should point out down here, this is not perfect. The temperature in here is too hot. If we keep launching the rocket regularly, it just generates too much heat. We need a third steam turbine. Ah, there's no room for that. We're gonna have to move all of this across. We're gonna have to enlarge the room. Yeah, there's going to be some enlargement necessary. The reason being as well, this uh, the natural gas pressure in here keeps rising. We're not removing it as quickly as we can. So this used to be at about 70 kilos, but now we're up to 200 and something. That's going to keep happening. So we need one more natural gas generator. Just one more. So we're going to have to squish this whole thing up. But first, first, no, first I'm going to finish this petroleum rocket so we can keep working on our uh, insulation. Great. Now all I have to do is make sure we insulate, double layer insulate this, put in bunker tiles, put out something to extract carbon dioxide from the bottom. Mm, yeah, we, we, we have to replicate this setup over here, though I'm not sure what we're going to put over this side. Actually, hmm, we might want to put in a telescope over here and maybe do a little bit of a sneaky test. Eh, if we put that telescope right there, 
what we can do is maybe do some uh, examination of the stairs from inside. This is all based on something I saw a while back where uh, someone had one of these behind a wall and because of the way the sight radius on this works, where it can see five tiles to the left of it, it should theoretically have three tiles of uh, open to the sky that it can see stuff with. Well, assuming we do this right. Uh, let's just deconstruct the top here. Do we have oxygen flowing? Yes, we do. Perfect. So once all that's done, let's see what kind of visibility we're getting in the sucker. Uh, reduced visibility still has 36% scan. Yep. 36% visibility, so it's still able to see parts of the sky despite being buried under a bunch of neutronium. That's, um, that's wonderful. I love it. It is not broken at all. Uh, yeah, you ooh, ow, ow. Maybe it's not perfect, but you know, it's a unique way of playing. Oh, one downside though is the moment carbon dioxide gets in there, it removes the line of sight. Oh, that's a pain. So until the carbon dioxide goes below a certain level, you won't be able to see out again. So if meteors do get in, oh, fine, fine. We'll have to, we'll have to stick something on top to stop that from happening. So bunker doors are back in town. Uh, we'll have to get rid of this. All right, that's proven to be working. You still need a space scanner though to open and close the doors. I think this would work better in a vacuum area. If you were doing a normal map, you could have it out in the vacuum of space, and then at that point, you wouldn't have to worry about the carbon dioxide. Just stick this behind a wall. You could literally just surround this in bunker tiles like that, all the way around and then you can dump it out anywhere and you wouldn't have to worry about it getting hit. It's going to be a bit slower because you've got the reduced visibility, but it does mean it's much, much faster and quicker to set up. Now, considering the options we have at the moment, I think we're just going to move this all to the left and finish scanning all the planets. We only have... Okay, we have a few left, but I'm waiting for ice resin, so why not? There is no point doing anything by halves. If we're going to get this done, we might as well get it done as quickly as possible. Oh, that's another planet bites the dust. How many more have we got left? Oh, God. Hurry up! Hurry up! One thing I never noticed before is they keep throwing things into these little containers beside them. You notice they, they grab something here and then... I don't know what that is. Uh, a data disc or something? And then they throw it into the little yellow container beside them. Okay, that's, that's actually a pretty cool animation. There's quite a few nice animations they've got built into this. You, you, you don't no notice unless you really look. To prepare this side of the map, we've got to make a few minor changes. Uh, this is going to end up being a wall. This tile's right here. We're going to have a bunker tile right here, then insulated tile right here. This means this has got to go, so we're going to have to just do a little bit of minor modifications here and squish everything to the other side. Maybe put our airlock to the other side as well. Before I do any movement here, I do want to vent this out first. Get all, the, get all of that natural gas out. I don't want that animation happening when we're in the middle of the movement. All right, uh, to get this done, we're going to get rid of that hydro sensor right there. It's going to turn this off though, I've overpressurized it, everything, there's plenty of oil in there, more than we need, so it should be good to go. Alright, then we can start breaking this sucker up. I'm thinking, you know, we'll start at the bottom there. I'm keeping this nice and slow because we've got to do this with a little bit of tact. Alright, we'll deconstruct that as well while we're at it. Alright, don't have a big explosion of natural gas anywhere, that seems perfect. All right, if the pressure in there goes up and hits the hydro sensor, we'll know we're cold, and that means we can delete that brick, and we won't have to worry about all of that natural gas escaping. If the pressure stops there, we may have a slight bit of trouble. All right, we've removed some of the power cabling, switched everything around. This should be just about ready to go. I think if we cut this block out here, no gas should escape. Probably. That's, that's the hope. Uh, as well as that, we can hook that up to there. Uh, disconnect these. This is the old automation. Uh, this was just put in to make sure that the, this runs all the time. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Not a problem. Huh. Okay, with that moved over, that, w that was a nice little delicate process to make sure that our oil well could move all the way one tile to the left. Just the joys of this map in general. Oh, are we not researching planets? We should really be doing that. How many we got left? One, two, three, four, five planets. That's it. Oh, wait. One, two, three. Yeah, just five more to go. I am all for that. Uh, let me do some tidying up here just to make sure that this is all good to go. Thinking about this, why don't we just extend our steam room all the way over here? We could just have, yeah, just one giant steam room all along the bottom from there over to there. We'd have to wall in the oil and make sure it got sealed off, but that only has one entrance. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. Hmm. Yeah, that means we need to move the poke shells out. I've been thinking about moving the poke shells over here. Well, just, you know, we can extract some stuff here and dump them right here in the corner. You know what? Easier to, easier to show than tell. This is where we're going to jam them all, assuming they're not currently angry. No, they are not currently angry, in which case we can start capturing these. You know what? We'll make it a high priority. 
get them all wrangled up and we'll get them all moved over. You can copy your settings over there and then we'll, this time we'll remember to unselect you. Yes, that would make far more sense. All right, let the transfer begin. The trick is we got to make sure none of them get dropped. It can happen occasionally if someone gets called to lunch while they're mid poke shell transport. But this is going way too well. Normally when I deal with these, someone gets clubbed to death a lot. I think none of them have dropped any eggs. That's why it's going so well. Okay, that was the, the least painful version of that I have ever done. I have no idea how that worked out. I think it's because there was just no eggs laid at the time. Okay, I'll take it. And uh, now we got to strip this whole section out and replace it with a steam room. We're going to have to wall it in across the top here. Maybe we'll... Hmm, will we leave this as the entrance or will we have to migrate the entrance somewhere else? All right, there was some minor complications. Uh, mistakes were made. Let's not point any fingers here. We'll just do a, a little bit of cleanup and uh, we'll, we'll just uh, say that, you know, it was uh, an act of uh, dupedom. Thankfully, that, that natural gas is not quite getting up into the living quarters. Uh, we've got a gas pump down here frantically trying to... <laughs> Scrub it out. Ah, uh, yeah, the, it, there was an attempt to uh, move this inside here, and uh, I deleted a tile I shouldn't have. So now, now there will be a little bit of a maintenance cost to be paid for this glorious mess. All right, the mess has been cleaned. Though, I have no idea how natural gas got in there. That shouldn't have been possible. That's not even a thing that... And I can't even get a mini gas pump in there because it'll instantly overheat. Well, looks like that's just going to have to stay there. Uh, something I will have to learn to live with for now, but I will find a way to remove that at a later date. For now, we need to finish this off. Uh, actually, we now need to launch this rocket. We need more ISO resin. Always more. What do you got? You got 3.9 tons left on your target planet? You are good to launch, my son. Off you go. Beautiful. Uh, close the doors. How much heat we got in there? Yep, way too much. We definitely need to extend this and add more steam turbines. That, that's, that is literally the first thing on the agenda. Very simple plan down here. We are going to use this as a sort of a vacuum seal right here to prevent any heat from this steam room we're about to vent in here, getting into our crude oil. And that's done. That way we should be able to just merge these two rooms, presuming we preheat this. Otherwise, uh, steam might touch this, turn to liquid, and then uh, I don't know what will happen. Probably something bad. I would prefer not to have this oil needed to be heated up to 200 degrees. Mm. Actually, yeah, no, definitely we don't want that. That would just be a waste of uh, resources. Uh, let's see about putting in some gas pumps and then sealing this whole thing up. So we've got most of the gas is going out of here. However, we can't seal right here. The reason being that's the power cable that's actually <laughs> powering everything. That's the annoyance of heavy wet wire. But what we can do is we can break in this side and sort of put in a joint plate right across there. And that should allow us to sever the other side. Of course, we're about to join a very hot area with a very cold area. And, oh, I did that wrong, didn't I? You know what, we will put that down like that. That way when we do join the two together, it won't be a complete mess. Eh, right there. Perfect. Once that goes in... Oh, yeah, a little bit of steam made it, unfortunately. To be expected. Come on, mop all that mess up. Right, now we can sever this here. Seal it in from the top. And we should be perfect. Eh. That should allow us to vacuum out this area, and then we can break in from, well, in through here to finish off the rest of it. Huh. Fairly straightforward. Right, this entire place has been vacuumed out. It is perfect. I have severed the p power going to these two gas pumps and the gas pipe going to that, so if we remove this and start letting the steam flow in, it shouldn't cause horrible problems. It shouldn't, being the operative word. Okay, okay, it seems to be fine. All right. That was, I, I want to say painless, but I want to make sure everything's fine. Okay, that seems to have worked. Uh, that's a complete vacuum there. That means this is insulated from the heat transfer. Right, we've got an extended steam room. Let's make some modifications, shall we? Ooh, one thing we'll have to take care of is the water coming in here. That water going to the oil well, it, I, I can't have that passing through the steam room. Even in ceramic pipes, it's going to start gaining temperature. Yeah, we're going to have to work around that. Uh, so how do we get in here? Why don't we just dig down here? Maybe we can get at that diagonally. Come on, can we? Yeah, there we go. That'll allow us to pump water around the outside edge. Ooh, okay, it's always these little things that catch you. Once that is finished all the way down, or once we've drained that much water out of the system, we'll connect up this side. Then we can start seeing about doing some more expansion. After many, many <laughs> more modifications, it turns out the water is going to come from up here and straight down. We've got to put in steam turbines and all sorts of stuff across the top here, which means we can't be mm, 
we sort of have to squish everything across, get all our water out of the way. We're going to have to change this cooling loop. This cooling loop will have to go along the bottom to stay out of the way. So many little changes that need to be made just to make it work right. Oh, well, we need to move our entire, well, this pile of resources. That has to be moved somewhere else. I'm thinking we'll just dump it up there. Why not? This could take a while though, so let's do a super fast forward, shall we? With all of that moved up there, all we gotta do is move some steam turbines around and find the most cost efficient way of getting in here. This is just too bulky, it takes up too much space, so we wanna see if we can't, you know, slide the ladder system down here in a more mm, space efficient fashion. Two more st steam turbines strapped on top, we should finally get the temperature in here under control. It hasn't gone below 200 degrees in a long, long time. Alright, uh. Yeah, this is going to have to go, isn't it? We're going to have to move the electrolyzers again. I think we can just about squeeze in a, a sort of semi-vacuum sealed lock in here. We just throw in some visco gel there. How much is that? That is 8 kilos. That is probably not enough. You know what? We'll wait till the second batch shows up. What have you got? Uh, we're up to 200 kilos. That makes more sense. Now, if we pop that, do we need it? No, I think we only need this one tile. I'm going to let that finish. That's probably a bad idea. We're going to get pressure damage. But if we delete these things really quickly, we can hopefully get this done before anything pops. Come on. Once we get that done... Yep, there's the pressure damage. We deconstruct that tile. Oh, God. Damn it. How? How did it break both the liquid locks? <laughs> That's just... Uh... Right then, so uh, we'll just seal that up there and then we'll deal with the enormous steam problem. How much steam got out? Oh, there's 200 kilos in there. Oh no. Oh man, there's a mess everywhere. Do not break that liquid lock. Do not, don't, don't. Bold, just, just bold. Okay, we're gonna like mop that there. Come on, come on, yep, there we go. And we're gonna mop everything we can and deal with the un... <laughs> Ah, uh, you gotta love this game. I have discovered some fun things about visco gel locks. Uh, if I place a brick right here, it, the gas in there will somehow force that visco gel out of the way and occupy the space. But only when I do it from the left-hand side, I think. If I do it from another side, it doesn't quite work that way. Yeah, so now it pops back up again. As oh wait, no, there's a bunch of it that ended up down here. Fine, let me, let me redo this again and let's do this the smart way. Simplest thing to do, give the steam somewhere else to go so it won't crush my visco gel lock. Maybe? That should work? No. Well, that's, that's a little frustrating. Hmm. How are we going to solve this problem? I know. More visco gel. We'll put in a visco gel lock, then delete these tiles here. Which means we should then be able to just throw in the... Pl oh, no, I've got that tile above it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We can come in from the top. We just gotta vacuum this out and then we can drop visco gel down there. We wanna make this nice and compact. Right, vacuum on top, done. Now we just need some way to get down there. Oh, we do not want that plastic dropping down there. I don't need any more napta, thank you very much. We've got plenty of that stuff lying about the place already. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a full 200 kilos of visco gel left, but 130 whatever should be fine. You know what, 95 kilos? That should almost be enough? Come on, give us some more. There we go, that's the last of all the visco gel. Well, now to see if we can vacuum this section out without causing this whole area to explode. You know what? I'm going to be safer this time. We're going to make sure that it can't explode all the way out by sticking in some tiles. Yeah, we'll just put in a tile there and there. And boom. We should hopefully be prevented from any catastrophic liquid lock failures. Yep, yep. Oh, God damn it. All right, let's try it from this side. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, if we do this right and we replace that tile, is it going to force that out? Because that would be most inconvenient if it did. I think when you do it from the opposite side, it should be fine, though. And the moment of truth. Just, come on, don't don't destroy my visco gel lock. Oh, god damn. <laughs> oh, I just want to make a little visco gel lock. Just, 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 that's all I want to do. Just so close. All right, one last attempt, and we're doing it just from the top. Oh, did that fill that correctly? You know what? Don't care. It's enough. I, I've, I've had enough of this. Uh, we'll get rid of that. We'll seal it in from the top and then crack in from the bottom. All right, you. Oh, you know what? We might want to dump some heat into it first. Uh, if it's too cool, it might actually heat up. 
and well, cause some of the steam to turn into water, and that would be bad. We'll just dump a temperature shift blade in there for a second, dump a bunch of chill, uh, heat into it, and then we'll open it up here. There we go. Don't break. Do not break. What? Whatever you do. How? That, that's... It, it, how? <laughs> okay, okay. Last, last, last attempt. We're going to squish 200 kilos of visco gel in there. Because we can. Then, we're going to let it expand. And the reason it hasn't caused any pressure damage... Oh, well, it is on the back, back side. It shouldn't cause any above it or below it. Come on. Oh, c how? <laughs> All right, you know what? You win. We're just going to have one blob of visco gel. One blob is fine. Uh, can we mop up this without mopping up that one, though, is the question. Just do, do, do mop up that one. Yeah, perfect. You know what? That is good enough for me because <laughs> nothing spells good enough like getting that frustrated over that long of a period of time. Oh. All right, we now have another entrance in there. Time to clean this up just a little bit. Ooh, and you know what else we can squeeze in here? Molecular Forge. Finally out of the way, not taking up some random amount of space up there. And right, now that that is in place, and we have a proper way in here, uh, we can actually delete a few things here, do a few minor modifications. We can rip this out, though that's probably going to be a little bit of a problem as well. Not that big, not that big. We just have to make sure that we don't let any of that nasty steam out. And I was going to just, you know, build tiles there to force the steam down, but now I'm worried if I build tiles there to force the steam down, it'll destroy the visco gel locks. I think we'll just have to eat those 400 kilos of steam. Uh, I'm okay with that. Oh, look, yeah, instantly broke it. That's that's kind of what we were expecting. There we go. <laughs> oh, I'll need to put another ladder for that section. Uh, we might want to reroute the power while we're at it. Reason being... We're going to bring all of our power up through here, through this central spine, because that, this all over here, that's got to go. So we'll just write the power up through there, and then, ah, okay, I'll just do a little bit of minor rejigging. All right, power completely redone. Now we can rip this all out, though that's probably going to be a bit of a mess. We'll take out this one first and just replace it with a proper insulated tile, and then we're going to have to deal with all this steam and heat and mess. Done. All right, you guys... Uh, you know what? We have a temperature cooling loop going through here, don't we? How about we replace... Oh, actually, we don't have it going right through there. Perhaps... Yeah, we can dip this down through here and replace some of these with metal tiles. We can, we can convert this all back to water pretty quick. A couple of metal tiles substituted in. Temperature in there is not plummeting rapidly enough. Some minor plumbing arrangements. Uh, yeah, that should be pretty straightforward. Come on. Yeah, we'll get rid of that. Boom. How are we looking in there? Ah, it's better. Soon we'll have all that water nicely condensed. Say hello to the new top of our industrial brick. Uh, three steam turbines over there, a couple more crammed in over there, so we've got the full 10 kilos of water per one pipe. I don't know if we're going to split it up yet. It'll depend on how this rocket works out. <laughs> I, think, I think I'm running out of time. I was hoping to get the petroleum rocket at least up and running, but I don't think I'm going to have time simply due to this. I, I have no idea how that became such an issue. I thought this was going to be a two-minute job. Turns out I was very, very wrong. Uh, so I think next up we are going to be finishing this off. We'll probably just go straight to hydrogen. I'll be able to collect enough iso resin in the background in between episodes. And we'll, we'll, we'll go straight to hydrogen. And then it's just a case of... I think this was some good suggestions to use this bit here. All of this free space we have right here. And just turn it into a recreational center. Like, just cram it full of all the recreational buildings. I mean, the dupes deserve it. It's kind of coming up on the end of this map. I think we sort of... Uh, well... I think we've covered quite a lot of it and pretty much everything we need. Though we do need something to fill in the industrial brick down here. I'm not sure what else I want to stick in here, though. Well, okay. There'll be the kiln and a few other bits and bobs, but I think we might still have some free space. We'll have to, we'll have to see what we want to do there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and uh, good luck.